Michael, what role would you say for both you and Kevin that Philly and New York music scene influenced your music, your incredible, distinct music? Well, I think, first of all, it was, um, being nine years older than Kevin, I had more feet in classical music and folk music, Broadway shows, and then I sort of was in a transition into rock and roll and the British invasion and stuff, but Kevin really started there. So I think that my roots and influences are a little bit different. They're not just kind of straight rock and roll. Um, for instance, uh, I knew all the first chairs of the Philadelphia Orchestra, and when my parents would take us there all the time, and the, to the ballet and the opera and stuff like that. So at the same time, though, I was very much aware, for instance, I had friends that I played in the orchestra, and they would tell me, well, I'm going to do a recording session, and they take three violins, and they make it sound like 20. And I was really intrigued by what that was. And I was, my, our sister Hilda had done some recording. Uh, we were aware of Cameo Parkway with, um, you know, the, the teenage rockers that came out of there. Um, it was always a place that we felt a part of music. And um, it was a very good place for me to start because it was somewhat friendly. Um, but I was telling Joe uh, before we came up that Philly is not really a place to really be in the entertainment industry because it's a, uh, Kevin and I are descended from Quakers and Quakers are very inwardly focused and the city of Philadelphia is inwardly focused. It doesn't go, like New York doesn't blast out of there. All the energy kind of goes back into it, which is a really great thing unless you're trying to make a living in the entertainment. <laughs> <laughs>